major issues bedeviling Nigeria's economy today and its society is unemployment. The rate of unemployment has increased tremendously during the last few years. This is one important topic we'll be discussing today on the program, Reality and You. Welcome, I am Priscilla Iwurm. To discuss this topic with me is a special guest in the house. He is a public affairs analyst, a development activist, Secretary General of Leeds Africa, and one of Nigeria's most brilliant minds. He is Mr. Osisiogu Eyinaya Kinsley. You're welcome to Thank the program. Thank you very sir. much. I'm happy to be here. All right. I would like you to give a meaning briefly to the term unemployment. Uh, thank you very much. Unemployment, uh, put very short and in context, is um, a situation of being unemployed. And I will also add to that that un being unemployed is when someone is uh, willing and ready to engage in a productive activity that could earn him a living, but unable to do so for several reasons. So that defines that uh, when someone is unable to get something meaningful to do, to earn him or herself a living within uh, a given con uh, economy or a context, such a person is deemed to be unemployed at that uh, moment. Okay, very well. Uh, um, a lot of employers today, majority of them though, are of the belief that Nigerian graduates today are not employable. In your view, is this true? Uh, in my view, it is not uh, true because um, the, uh, the, I don't think the employers have complained that uh, they have spaces of uh, uh, places to take people and yet people are not qualified to take them. I think that is um, a situation of structural unemployment when probably these you know, employment slots are there but people are not you know, qualified with the requisite skills to take them up. Uh, what we have in Nigeria is uh, basically uh, demand deficient unemployment, which entails where the demand for employment is actually falling short of the supply we have. You know, every year thousands of uh, skilled and well-educated people are churned into the labor market, but the economy is not growing commensurately to the number of people, you know, coming out. Uh, i give you a classical example. The country had been in a, a recession state in the last couple of years. Being fair to this government, it must have gone by about 10 years when it has been coming. And as we speak, uh, at the moment, the Nigerian economy is just about 12% into recession. And of course, recession is one major uh, cause of uh, unemployment because it does not seek to employ those who come, uh, who become ready by virtue of graduating from the university to be employed. It seeks to you know, deny people of their jobs by downsizing uh, by, uh, from companies who have technology is also one of them that take up the you know, job of people who were there have been issued. So I would want to say that in the case of uh, Nigeria, very, very much it is uh, the case of uh, the demand deficient uh, unemployment where you know, the, the jobs are not uh, quite enough to uh, take up uh, these people that are recent. But of course, in the last couple of years, maybe three years, uh, the, the rate of uh, uh, inflation is beginning to come down. We are getting close to single digits at about 11 point something percent. Uh, so it's behold, but unfortunately, our, while it is uh, decreasing at 2 percent, our population is increasing at 3 percent. So as the government is struggling to reduce this, thing, it's not really having much effect because of that uh, excess of 1 percent. Mm -hmm. So for a, in a, in a country populated like Nigeria, with a population growing at about 190 to 200 million. Mm -hmm. If the economy is not growing commensurately, mm -hmm. or even coming out of recession as quickly, uh, as quicklier than it is now, the unemployment will continue to be endemic. So uh, I don't think that uh, Nigerians do not have enough hands to, uh, they're not squares, square pegs to fit into the square holes, or round pegs to fit into the round holes of employment. But I think that it's majorly that of inner inadequacy of these spaces to take people. Uh, I think that would be that for now. Okay, uh, very well. Um, it would be appropriate to review that um, the turnout lately at the Big Brother auditioning, mm. it's what was gathered by our correspondents, was massive. The yeah. turnout was very, very massive. Yeah. And 
one of the youths there was reportedly he collapsed during yes. the interview you know it was it was a massive gathering mm. and I don't know what your react to me it's a pathetic situation yeah. and I, I, I want to know what your reaction I pick, it is I, what do you make of do you attribute it to unemployment yeah I picked that word pathetic because um, it gives you a, a glimpse mm. into how much uh, how the situation is out there mm. I agree with you that it is quite pathetic I want to cast your minds back also to the about uh, about four or five years ago when the Nigerian immigration was to handle recruitment into just one agency uh, immigration and uh, the, the population of, of upsurge of uh, the people coming for that inter that interview you know it, it was more than a I wouldn't say a football match now because it was more than a, a political rally mm -hmm. and it was also interesting to know that this was not just held in one center mm -hmm. the true federal system of Nigeria was recognized by having uh, every uh, state to have a center. You can imagine the number of youth that came out for that interview. Then boiling it down to Big Brother Africa. We followed it up and uh, of course I don't think that the handlers of that process envisaged even 50% of the people who came there. Mm. If not, they could have asked to use the National Stadium. Oh. So if they did not ask to use the National Stadium, that means they did not expect uh, and this is a third uh, edition, I don't know if it is third or fourth, but it was followed for about uh, a, the penultimate year, the last year, and now. People came out in their numbers. Mm. And this is also, these people are restricted by age. These people are restricted by certain qualifications. These people are restricted by those who have international passports, and you have that number. Now, relax the qualifications a bit, mm. and it would have been uh, a pandemonium. But we thank God that uh, it did not go beyond what it was. And again, I agree that it's a situation. I, we even thank God that it's in this situation. I followed about uh, a month ago in, Ma in Namibia, Windhoek, which has the, that country has the second highest unemployment rate in Africa, ranging at about 46%, uh, just behind Congo. And Namibia, the, the unemployed youth stage a, 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 a protest, and you don't want to know what happened. The number of people who agreed they were unemployed shut the whole, uh, you know, city down, city of Windhoek down, and uh, it's it's very pathetic. So that also shows how resilient Nigerian uh, Nigerians have been, and uh, how we are able to take up every opportunity. And again, Big Brother Nigeria would not say they would not have more than enough, uh, more than what they need mm -hmm. to feature in that program. But again, we are always more than available to take up every little opportunity as, a, as a employable young people in Nigeria. Okay, now based on the United Nations estimates, mm. the population of Nigeria as at Thursday, 7th February 2019 is 198,916,208. Mm. Now, mm. do you see the rapid growth in population in Nigeria as a factor responsible for the high level of unemployment in Nigeria? Yes, uh, because uh, the demography has been able to put us into problem because we've not planned alongside demography. Okay. Whether you plan or not, population will continue to increase. And Africa is not such a place where you are going to handle population by asking people not to have children. Uh, the factors that influence population growth in, uh, majorly is birth, and then secondly is immigration, and third, death rates. Of course, death rates cannot uh, outnumber bad rates mm -hmm. because uh, people who continue to I understand uh, just every day or uh, thereabouts, over 20,000 children are born in Nigeria and uh, it's, it's, it's quite uh, huge. So, uh, like I said earlier, that puts our growth rate at about 3%, 3% uh, growth rate. And the rate at which Nigeria is recovering from recession, which is a major factor uh, that influences unemployment, is just about 2%. We are not even growing. We are only coming out from the negative index. Mm -hmm. So we are still trying to come to zero and start growing where the population... So obviously, the population explosion is really, really something that Nigeria needs to stand up by policy, by execution, by effort, and by being proactive, work towards ensuring that our population is... After all, population is not a problem in itself because we have the Chinas of this world the Indians of this world uh, 
countries like Pakistan that has the same population with us, uh, America also being able to take people uh, and all that. Even the countries in Africa like Egypt and Ethiopia mm. that has about half of Nigeria's population mm. do not have the kind of situation we have. That's what I'm saying that no matter how small a country is, no matter how large a population is, if the government does not plan proactively to, to, to grow the economy alongside, uh, in tandem with the population growth, it must always be a problem. Malawi is not such a very big country. Okay, you can ask that Congo that has the worst situation of almost 50% uh, you know, has uh, but they have all it takes. There is no country now in, in the world that has more minerals than uh, Congo, which means they have the potential to create these industries, to create local content, to create employment for their people. But what is happening in Congo? These people come there to mine industry. The government is not responsible and responsible enough to use that opportunity to create pure employment for people. And then you see that uh, very, 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 very pathetic situation like child, uh, child labor. You know, children going into the mines to mine. You cannot count those people as being employed because it, the international level organization cannot even uh, accept that. Ironically, their fathers are at home, not being employed, and children are there. So I think the poli for Africa needs to come up with a, a very pragmatic policy that multinationals have to observe local content. It must be a law. Uh, sometime in Zimbabwe, the, the, the unemployment rate went so high, they came up with what they call the indigenization policy of minimum of 50 plus 1 percent of uh, indigenous police under the government of Robert Mugabe, mm -hmm. that 50.1 percent of uh, all uh, employment must be indigenous, of, uh, starting from board level to uh, everybody in the company, and it, uh, it helped them go up a bit. So I think uh, the population in itself is not a problem. The, the, the policy that takes cognizance of that population to plan for the future is more important, and I think uh, Nigerian being seventh, you know, on the ladder of unemployment in Africa, you know, having countries like as small as Lesotho, Mala, uh, Namibia, and all that being ahead of us, uh, it doesn't really, it's not, it's not a population thing because it should have followed the population. Ghana is much more better. Ghana is, uh, you know, Kenya, those people are, have fairly 50% population, Ghana 30 something percent, and they are doing much more better in terms of. Uh, because their own economy, Ghana is growing at 8%. Mm. That means Nigeria is lagging behind Ghana by, uh, let's say, about 20, because we are still 11 behind, mm -hmm. uh, minus 11. Uh, that is until recession. So I think uh, population really doesn't have anything to do with it. Once you are able to match your planning with your demography, it would actually solve the problem or if not totally, but mitigate it a bit. Well done. On that note, we'll take a short break. And when we come back, the program continues. Thank you. reality and you and we're discussing unemployment i have with me a special guest he is mr osisiogu ilinaya kinsley a public affairs analyst and he is also a secretary general of leeds africa and a development activist okay now there, there is um, um a trending post mm. going viral now on social media of a young female furniture maker and 
she was captured, she was seen making a sofa, a beautiful sofa. And I was so impressed when I saw this. And recalling that our polytechnics today, you know, that used to focus on active, you know, practicals, have joined the universities in their conventional way Degree. of um, yeah. um, theories. Theoretical. Uh, yeah. So, so I, I, I don't know. What's, what's your opinion on, on this system? Uh, of learning. Yes, exactly. That is part of our problem. You know, if you want to plan properly, if demography, if you take cognizance of uh, the demography or the population exposure of Nigeria, we have to be very, very strategic. One being that first, the government, uh, which is the biggest employer of labor, cannot employ everybody with that kind of uh, theoretical skills, like managerial and uh, the staff in the office. Mm -hmm. Number two is that uh, the countries that have got, have huge population don't play with vocational training, uh -huh. like you have with uh, uh, India, the, the, the Chinas of this world, and the Asian tigers with huge population. They don't play with vocational training. Uh, number three is that uh, entrepreneurship is the way to go yeah. right now in the world globally, mm -hmm. because you do, you would not only be able to allow the country uh, young people to come up with their ingenuity to the fullest they would also be able to employ other young people. Mm -hmm. Little wonder most governments have actually come up with policies that seek to address this issue of uh, enjoy, uh, 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 encouraging young people to set up their own little businesses. And even when they set it up, government try to counter, counter, give counterpart funding in terms of paying part of the salaries, mm -hmm. like we have with Empower right now, and uh, we had with uh, Shopee and all of those in the previous administration. But what we are saying is that uh, the technical and vocational training institutions have to be equipped. In fact, in, in, in very in, in better in serious uh, climbs, these people are more uh, they 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 even more in in demand than these other people. Okay. The truth is that uh, the, the 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 universities are too many churning out not too many in terms of capacity. <laughs> Uh, too many in terms of being able to take to the society being able to take care of the number of people they churn out. Mm -hmm. I think uh, vocational training, polytechnic education should not be treated as second fiddle anymore. Sure. Like people who are not able to get vocational training, uh, uh, university education, but to pursue a degree, mm -hmm. uh, having to pursue an OND or HND, looking as though they. I don't think it is. In fact, that is where the end thing is now, mm -hmm. because today they are closer to ICT which is ruling the world now. In fact, most people, those richest people in the world have something to do with ICT. They are closer to the off-grid uh, off revolution. That is the area of uh, generating power outside the normal uh, grid system that comes from the national grid, like the dams and, the, uh, and other forms of electricity that is channeled through the conventional government means. Okay. But these other people, like uh, solar system, other uh, off-grid electrical uh, power generation, is also another technical aspect that is really, really ruling the world today. Mm -hmm. And there is a very big deficit in Africa. Mm -hmm. Because if you can imagine that every, country, every home in Africa needs to go that way, you can imagine the number of manpower. And it is even a disservice to Africa that these pastries are imported wholly. Mm -hmm. Even if we have to, this, the things that is needed to uh, manufacture those uh, solar energy equipment can all be produced there and give us the job. So if the market is here, then the job should also be here. Uh, let us not st uh, uh, stop taking the money away in dollars, mm -hmm. kill our economy, plunge us into recession, yet jobs are not created by those things. So more, the more we look into the vocational training of our people, the more we de-emphasize uh, the heat at all over romanticized university education, the more it would help us create more jobs for people, the more it would help us have our young people become self-reliant immediately they leave uh, school and even be able to employ others. Uh, look at what has happened in Nigeria. The informal sector has seemed to employ more than the formal sector. If you check the number of, uh, if you go to the north, the number of uh, maybe farmers, the number of people, petty traders, you know, and these people are doing well. They are able to train their children in any school you can think of. Come to uh, Southeast, the, the number of uh, these traders, 
that take the, a lot of people up on apprentice apprenticeship system. Mm -hmm. These people with little or no basic education, they become very, very successful. Sure. The list is so long about people who didn't have much problem. If you go to Southwest, they also have a system where people still scope. I, 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 we are now encouraging people not having education. But what we are saying is that these informal sectors that require little or no formal education or much more of vocational education mm -hmm. that helps them do their business, that helps them when they travel to China, understand what these people are talking about, that helps them, uh, you know, uh, do business competently, needs to be emphasized, just like the big populations in the world, like, like China, like uh, India. Of course, I wouldn't like to mention those people too much because uh, Nigeria has since uh, criticized them. But again, they have huge population and if they have been able, Brazil is also there. Mm. If they have been able to get it a bit right, mm -hmm. uh, you know, in terms of handling uh, unemployment uh, for their country, through vocational training, not many of them that the government is employing. I think it's something we need to take seriously, both at policy and of course, implementation levels. Yeah. Okay, very well. It would be, it would be very um, important to draw our minds back to the causes of, and you've mentioned some of it. I want to know the causes of unemployment. If you can state that. Yeah, uh, basically, of course, I said the major issue of unemployment is uh, demand deficient unemployment, which is a situation whereby the, 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 the young people are looking for jobs, but the spaces are limited. Okay. The government can only employ just about 20-25% of people who are eligible. Mm -hmm. Then the next option is going to be the, uh, the, the, the private sector, the corporate organization like the banks and all that. But of course, these are businessmen who government can employ as much as they can take. But uh, the less a businessman is going to be employing, the more better for him mm -hmm. because he's going to be looking at uh, the... Uh, his uh, net profit at the end of the day, okay. taking too many staff. So uh, they would not want to employ too many. Then number three is going to be the informal, the small and medium uh, scale enterprises, which of course is where we have the huge, the, 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 the huge potential of getting these people employed. Mm -hmm. There is a lot of things that are not happening, that there are a lot of things that we import into this country. There's a lot of things we, uh, this is that I know that uh, could have employed so many much more people. Mm -hmm. uh, that's, you know, that is basically because number three, uh, a cost of unemployment, like I said, the SMEs that could employ people, uh, the government need to do a lot of things in this number three aspect. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't expect them to do much in number one to employ more people. Mm -hmm. I do not also expect you to begin to force the private sector, the, the big scale or medium scale enterprises not to break even. But I expect us to look at, uh, you know, go to Kanu, go to Aba, go to Lagos, and make sure that all those traders are in power. And how are we supposed to do that? We are going to uh, ensure that we create an enabling environment for them. How is the trader in Aba sure that when he produces these shoes, he is going to get petrol need to buy them? Then he begin to think of good roads. He begin to think of electricity for him, for him to produce those things properly. So enabling environment is very, very important. That is one of the solutions you can have with unemployment. I can assure you that if there is an enabling environment created, you can have much more jobs you know, coming into the society. Okay. Nigerians are not only very hardworking, but very, very ingenious. Yeah, and they I'm are doing a lot of things. <laughs> yeah, they are doing a lot of things. You need to go to some of these African countries and see the number of Nigerians you know, going to those mm. places, settling down, doing yeah. a lot of remarkable things. When you walk into the streets of Accra, in Banjo, uh, the Gambia, even up to uh, Zimbabwe, all those places, you need to see, I'm not talking, I'm talking about the outer wise, but I'm talking about genuinely, mm -hmm. you can be sure that even in Zambia, so many Nigerian farmers are, you know, in those places doing uh, very extraordinary things. You know, these things are there. So if the government environment is created for people here, they would uh, listen. And then I read something from Botswana. Okay. Botswana recently declared that 50% uh, 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 subsidy or discount for registration of businesses run by young people. Mm -hmm. That means they are encouraging young people to run businesses, and then they would. They, they, the Botswana is going to encourage them. Mm -hmm. Um, 
the, 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 even, import, even importation is also, and exportation is another variable aspect mm. of business. You know, young people can go into value addition, mm -hmm. into things that are, create, are produced there. Mm -hmm. Most ships that bring things into this country tend to go back empty. That means the, uh, the, the index of, employ, uh, of importation is much more higher than that of exportation. So value addition into our things we produce here to take outside is also the state. Government should look at you know, incentivizing those uh, aspects of business for young people. Okay, young people, you don't have the experience, you have their own money, we have to give you tax holidays, we have to give you import rebate or export rebate, mm -hmm. we have to give you a lot of, you know, all of these things. You see that it becomes easier. Mm -hmm. In terms of bank loans, they, wow. can, they could always uh, make it very, very easy for young people to access loans exactly. at one-digit interest rates. And you will see a lot of people, a lot of young people. Yeah, this is how young people are not do, uh, trying, but you see a lot of young people go into business and you wonder what is happening. They, 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 they are owing banks, you know, they are not breaking even, they are not able to pay salaries and all that. That is normal with companies who just start a little more. And more importantly, men mentorship. Uh, we think that established companies should be encouraged to uh, mentor uh, young people who go into business. So that you don't go into business with little, little maybe you read electrical engineering, then you go into tailoring business. Of course, you do not have comparative advantage in that. Mm -hmm. But if you have established tailor or a subject carpenter on that uh, vocational training, it could always uh, help. And more importantly, we, I think uh, another solution is policy. A local content policy is very important. Like I talked about in Zimbabwe, mm -hmm. if you are MTN, if you are Julius Berger, yeah. if you are DSTV, mm -hmm. and you are coming to do business here, you put pen on paper that a social percentage of our of, of, of your workforce has to be indigenous of this country. What it means is that if you pretend you look around, you are not able to find indigenous of that country, you have about six months to one year to send them mm -hmm. to go and get the training to come back. What it means is that in terms of succession, in terms of sustainability, in the next 10 years, that thing you are doing, there must be Nigerians who are able to do uh, those things uh, with much equal dexterity and competence with which you do it in your, uh, from where you brought it from. We cannot continue to keep multinationals in Africa for too long because they have been here for decades and it has not rubbed off on us. And then these monies go out, go back into the. So it is not it is not bad for us to borrow technology or borrow expertise, but it's very very bad for us to dwell on them. Right. It will continue to make our people unemployed. It will continue to drive our economy into uh, quote unquote recession. And uh, I, I I I may not be sure about that. Thank but, uh, you so thank much. You. Okay, finally, finally, you know the elections is mm. far approached, yeah. approaching come February 16, and. Um, you know, I would like to know what would be your advice to youths out there? You know, to, we, we need to be security conscious mm. now. What would be your advice to youths, you know, to people concerning the elections? Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, over 70% of uh, Africa's population is a youth population, mm -hmm. which makes it uh, very, very, uh, our, our, our action or inaction being very significant mm -hmm. to the success or otherwise of the elections. So talking to young people means uh, talking to virtually uh, everybody that is uh, involved in the elections. I yeah. uh, want to think that uh, it is more about us, not about, not more about them. We know that this thing is a gradual process. There are things we need to look out for. Yes, we have fought for not too young to run, for young people to get into positions. Mm -hmm. But again, when the bill even came into place, we did not really get the number of young people we need mm -hmm. to contest for positions. One, because of cost of running elections. Mm -hmm. I think before we get there, you now begin to think of how, at what age do, do the young people graduate from school, mm -hmm. given the strike, given the uh, economy, given people not being able to get admission because of low capacity rate of higher institutions, mm -hmm. given how long it takes before getting a job, that was bringing it back to unemployment. Mm -hmm. I think uh, it is an incremental process that if young people are able to look at it from the perspective that yes, we want a situation that happened in France or in Australia. We have persons below 40 become presidents of such countries 
to happen here in Africa. We must use our numbers to vote any of the candidates who is able to assure us to assure us that our economy would recover so that young people will get jobs and good jobs in good time and be able to save and prepare themselves for the cost of elections. Mm -hmm. Because without economic empowerment, there is no political empowerment. Unless if you want to be tied to the whims and caprices of a godfather, which too many young people do not want to be doing, the, doing again. Mm -hmm. this, if the economy is okay, the unemployment issue should be solved so that our people, our young people will have those who are financially stable to contest these elections. And then it also takes care of vote buying. If over 70% of uh, voters are young people, and then you come to this police station to say they will send you away because it's not going to do anything because of the unemployment situation being endemic. That is why someone will have the effrontery to come and bribe a young person with such amount of money. So if we want a situation, we must vote a candidate that will ensure that young people get jobs, young people are not uh, abused, and young people would be able to be empowered. Young people will vote for young people at the end of the day. And, uh, and uh, so we must uh, also, uh, the, the, the issue of unemployment, issue of economy has a direct bearing with uh, insecurity and the extreme form of insecurity is urgency. Mm. I'm sure that uh, uh, we must also look at using unemployment creation to solve the problem of uh, insecurity. And of course, the employment creation has to also be tied with education. We want to have a candidate, either the incumbent or the challenger, to be able to increase, even if by 100%, the budgetary allocation to education, so that we have more uh, well, better equipped graduates. We also have a better, uh, you know, uh, non-punctuated academic calendar. Like we want to commend the federal government for you know, reaching the truth that has brought back uh, ASU back to classes yesterday. It was a big one. After almost 100 days, we congratulate everybody. Uh, but again, this kind of thing should not continue. If you continue seeing young people that stay three months away from class in a year, it is difficult to have a president below 40. Because Ooh. before you graduate, <laughs> it's, going to be, it's going to be that you're going to for a four-year course, you spend about seven years, mm -hmm. and then you have youth service, and of course, it's not even assured you're going to get a job immediately. Thank you so, mm. so, so much for mm. coming on the program. Thank you very much. Too. It was a pleasure having you. Thank All you. right, thank you so much for watching. I hope you have learned a lot from the program. This is Reality and you Stay with me. Next time would we'll come again. Bye for now.